Hi, and welcome to this video on robot design using MATLAB and Simulink. In this video, we'll take a look at some trends in industrial robotics, particularly in the context of factory automation, and see how tools in MATLAB and Simulink can be used to design and simulate autonomous robots in the space. I'll then show a demo that focuses on algorithm design and simulation of a mobile manipulator in a factory setting. So in conventional factories, robots are just automated systems. There are these precise machines that solve repetitive tasks using manually specified trajectories, typically without any live sensor feeds. However, thanks to advances in robotics, we've been able to incorporate autonomy more directly in the current state. Collaborative robots, or cobots, work more closely with humans and incorporate sensor feedback in decision making. Algorithms are more advanced and tasks are less strictly defined. So where are we headed? Smart factories are moving further away from hard programmed automation and more towards true autonomy. AI enabled robots equipped with advanced perception and control algorithms can handle more complex challenges. But for robots like that to succeed, we'll need well designed and well tested software. So this is where MATLAB and Simulink come in. This demo shows how our tools can be used for the kinds of autonomous algorithm design needed for smart factory applications using the example of a mobile manipulator that is simulated in Gazebo but controlled in Simulink. And here we use ROS as the primary uh, communication between the Simulink model and the robot. So let's take a closer look at the world and what the robot has to do. This robot consists of two pieces. The base is a Husky, a clear path Husky, and the top robot arm is uh, a Canova Gen 3. And this robot arm has to pick up these objects at the conveyor belt, so the green can and the red bottle, and then it has to move those objects to the appropriate bin, either the blue bin or the green bin, depending on the object. So let's get started with the model here. Um, and we'll start running that, and as soon as it starts up, you'll see two camera feeds come in. So the first camera feed here, this is just a third person camera to show us what's going on, but this other one is the feed from a camera that's on the robot's wrist, uh, on the Canova Gen 3 wrist. And you can see immediately we identify the can in the bottle. We do that because we're using a pre-trained deep learning model that uh, was trained offline using labeled images from Gazebo uh, in MATLAB. And then from that you can see we have the pose of the bottle in 2D space. We relate that to a pose in 3D space using the focal length and specs from the camera get the pose of the where the robot needs to go, so it's holding pose, and generate a trajectory. So you can see that trajectory is currently executing. Um, and then we send that to the robot. Once the robot's in the holding pose, the, the bottle is, then the, the whole robot will navigate over to the bin. And that's done using this binary occupancy grid map. So this map was also collected ahead of time. Essentially, we had the Husky drive around the environment with a LiDAR sensor, uh, to scan the environment and create the map. And now we know the start position, so we know the, the conveyor belt position, the goal position, the position of the blue bin, and we create this red path. So we plan the path, um, and then we follow it using a pure pursuit uh, controller, which is a way of um, following a, a defined path with a mobile robot. So you can see the red bottle is dropped off here, and then the robot will cycle back and start over uh, with the green can. So while it's doing that, let's take a closer look at the, um, at the model and how that works. So you can see here that the uh, model is controlled predominantly by this mobile manipulator, um, this main scheduler. So this state flow chart here just controls the high level state. Currently it's in navigate, but it could also be, for example, in the picking state. And that high level state is then used for uh, more fine-grained control of the um, of the mobile base and the robot manipulator, which have their own schedulers. So, for example, when we get to the picking, the mobile base will be stationary, and the mobile and the manipulator will go through detection and trajectory generation. And you can see that here with the scheduler. So, the scheduler actually serves to provide inputs and to trigger these subroutines that are here in these tr triggered subsystems. So for example, when we get to the, when, once we know we're at the picking pose, we'll be able to detect the object and then we'll be able to generate a bunch of trajectories. So for example, picking is a trajectory uh, where you start with the current pose, the holding pose, and you go to the target, so where we basically, the detection pose, and then that trajectory is created and sent to the robot via a ROS message. So this ROS message here 
um, is used. And we use ROS communication because it allows us to use the shipped ClearPath and Canova ROS packages. So that means that these ROS packages handle the low-level motion control, so the torques that go to the manipulator uh, or the actual drive of the mobile base. And when we eventually deploy this on hardware, we'll be able to use these same ROS packages on the hardware, and so we'll be, be able to use the same Simulink model to communicate with that. Uh, we can even deploy a, a standalone ROS node to, to gener using code generation. So you can now see that this robot is going to drop off this object at the bin here, and after it does that, we're going to want to reset the world. And to do that, we're going to use another method of communication to Gazebo. We're going to use our MATLAB Gazebo interface. Uh, so in MATLAB and Simulink, we can communicate with Gazebo with ROS, but we can also use uh, blocks in Simulink or our MATLAB interface, which is what we've done here. And you can see that this lets us reset so that the robot can come back around. So uh, how could we extend this? Well, we could use what I just talked about to vary up the positions of these objects. So we could see if we change the position a little bit, how does the, does the robot picking uh, still work? Similarly, we could change up the lighting in this area to see how robust we need to make our deep learning model. Or we could add more robots. We could add more robots to the space and turn each of these Simulink models into a subsystem that can be used to control each model. We could also extend our algorithm design by adding more autonomy to the mobile robot base or to the manipulator. So for instance, in this shipped example, instead of just planning and following a path based on a predefined map, we use uh, LiDAR sensing, so the blue lines that you see, and VFH to avoid obstacles. So for example, if the person were to walk in front of the robot, it would navigate around them. We could similarly build on the manipulator algorithms. Here, we use a motion planner to plan collision-free trajectories in more complex environments. Ultimately, though, the goal is to have it run on hardware, and you can see how code generation and hardware support interfaces make that possible in this example. In this video, I showed you how you can use MATLAB and Simulink to design robot algorithms for autonomous factory applications. But now I'd encourage you to explore these or our related examples and really see how you can use MATLAB's rich ecosystem to build on top of them and to create your own smarter and more autonomous robots for your own factory applications.